everyone today. We well, thank the Lord for this uh, workers' meeting and uh, in sort of people. We we'll rejoice with you that you are changing the face of everything. I see that something, a great work is going on behind there. And I pray that uh, you finish everything and it will be like uh, a solo cathedral. Yeah. It will happen. Yeah. Somebody there said it will happen. Yeah. And all the other places, so really, where are you there? I know should you, where are you? And uh, Moshi, where are you? We're going to replicate and reproduce something like this. Cathedral everywhere. Put your hand in your pocket. Bring it out. Something will come out. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for such a glorious day. Thank you for happy people, joyful people, people who are willing to serve you. And I pray, Lord, you bless our sacrificial service in Jesus' name. As we work for you, bless every family. Bless every life. And we pray that the great, great miracles you are performing through us, for every one of us, you also multiply for everyone and every uh, worker in Jesus' name. Make this a memorable time, a great time. And we pray that you give us the grace and the strength and the power to be doers of the word. Bless your people today. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless everyone. You can sit down. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. Just three verses of scripture. Verses 6, 7, and 8. Proverbs chapter 6. From verse 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth a meat in the summer and gathereth a fruit a fruit in the harvest you can see what the lord is telling us today is saying go go to the ant and it's referring to those who are idle those who are lazy those who are sluggards it's referring to everyone actually everyone that is not doing as much as he ought to do in your personal life in your family in your profession, in the work of the Lord. It says you are created for a purpose and the purpose for which you are created will be fulfilled. He has given you time. He has given you treasure. He has given you talent. He has given you everything so that you will be an achiever. In the work of God, you are going to be an achiever. In the work you lay your hand upon, you are going to be an achiever. But look at what the Lord is saying. Look at that verse. says, go. That means rise up. And then it says, watch. Watch those ants. Observe them and learn. And then it says, in that verse 6, consider her ways and be wise. It says, consider. That means look intelligently. And look critically. And compare her ways with your own ways. And begin to learn. And if you find as you compare, as you contrast between yourself and the ant. It says if you contrast, then you'll correct something. you correct yourself. And you will practice what you learn. And then it tells us there in that verse 6, it says, and be wise. It says the reason we're coming here. The reason we're coming to the workers' meeting and the reason we're learning all this is so that we will be wise. You are going to be wise. What does it mean, does it mean to be wise? As you look at the ants and it says we learn the wisdom from them, it says we act with foresight. Because it says, look at verse 8, it says, provideth her meat in the summer. That is, he knows that winter is coming. He knows that uh, the rainy season is coming. And while there is chance, while there is day, he provides a food, a meat in the summer and gathereth a fruit, a food in the harvest. That means acting with foresight. That means acting with the future in view. That means having been at work the first thing in the morning. That is, you wake up. You are not a sluggard. You are not lazy. You are not idle. You are not just rolling on the bed. You get up 
and you are forced, you are forced at work, and then you do forced rich work, and then you focus on the work you are doing. As you look at the word and, there's another word, and anticipate, anticipate. What the ant does is that it anticipates the future, anticipates the time when there will be no chance to gather food. And so ants anticipate. And he's saying that we need to learn this, that you anticipate, you give prior thought and attention, and then to provide activity. You have activity, profitable activity, and you foresee the future foresee the future as we talk about it in a spiritual sense the future is eternity the future is when we leave this world the ants future is when there will be no time to gather food and therefore the ant is looking at the future and he's saying I will prepare and he says you have a future too and your future is eternal and because of that future, you're looking beyond anything you're doing, anything you're thinking. You're thinking of that future. And it says now in that uh, chapter 6, chapter 6, I'm reading verse 6 again. It says, go. That is, don't just sit down. That is, don't be immobile or immovable. Don't be static. Go to the edge. And then it says, consider her ways and be wise. As we look at uh, those uh, two words, consider and be wise. Consider and be wise. Every time you read the word of God, you consider. Then it leads you to wisdom. Every time you hear a message from the Bible, you consider. Then it leads you to wisdom. I'm looking at Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32, and I'm reading here from verse 29. Deuteronomy chapter 32, and we're reading from verse 29. It's uh, talking about the children of Israel, and it's referring to you and to me. It says, oh, that they were wise. Oh, that they were wise. If they were wise, what would they do? That they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. What's a latter end? That's the future. That's the future. It says, oh, that they were wise, and then they will understand, and then they will consider the future. And that's what uh, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6 is telling us. It says, go to the ants. Are you idle? Are you doing nothing? Are you a worker and you are not working? Are you a leader and you are not leading? Are you a pastor and you are not pastoring? Are you a teacher and you are not teaching? Are you a person that God has raised up and said, go feed my people and you are not feeding them? Are you somebody you have learned, you have gone to school and you ought to be a teacher and you are not teaching? He says, you are sluggard. That you are not doing the purpose, you are not doing the thing for which you are trained, for which you are created, for you which you are redeemed. And today, a new strength is coming in your life. And it says now, if a change is going to happen, you will get up. You will not be like you have always been. You will not stay like you have always stayed. You will go. And then it says, this is where you go. Go and observe those ants. And then as you observe them, look at their ways, look at how they act, and look at how they work, and learn. And then consider and be wise. Wisdom is coming to somebody right there. And then he tells us, look at this. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 20, chapter 13. Proverbs chapter 13. And I'm reading from verse 24. It says, there be four things which are little upon the earth. But they are exceeding wise. It says, don't minimize them. Don't belittle them. And it says, don't think because they are little, they cannot teach you something. It says, there are four things which are little upon the earth and they be exceeding wise. The ants are a people, not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The ants are a group of creatures that they don't appear to be strong. They are feeble and all the same. They are not beggars. All the same, they are not poor. All the same, they don't have impoverishment. All the same, they don't have any famine. Although they don't have strength, they have sense. 
they have strategy and they have ability and they get involved in activity and they do something i'm talking to somebody there you'll do something you will be an achiever all the complaints and all the excuse i am feeble i am small i'm not educated i am this i am that everything god has raised you up to do you will do in jesus name we're considering this great lessons from neglected teachers that's the topic tonight great lessons from neglected teachers we have neglected these hands and the lord is telling us go back to them and observe them and as you observe them learn i will learn i said i will learn and uh, today we're going to use uh, that word ants a n t s ants in the plural a activity activity n networking networking that's what you'll find among the ants they network they connect together not for play they connect together not for entertainment they connect together for work for service for activity a for tell me activity and tell me t tenacity tenacity they are there and they hold on to that if you have ever observed the ants when they pick up that thing and then they are going like this nothing stops them nothing takes that thing away from them tenacity and s strategy strategy let's go back again a activity with foresight activity with foresight as you look at the ants those ants are active and then they are active with a goal they are active with a drive they are active with a destination activity with foresight and n networking for the future networking for the future do you see the network is because they're carrying loads heavier than themselves they're carrying the food and they're carrying meal that is bigger than the size of the ant and so they network together they unite together and it is for the purpose of the future t tenacity despite feebleness tenacity despite their feebleness they're feeble but they will not give up they're weak but they not give up they are small but they not give up if you are a man you're a woman you're a brother you're a sister and you lay your hand on something you hold on to something you say this is what god has called me for in that house fellowship this is what god has called me for in this zone or in this district or in this group this is what i must do you get at it and winds will blow challenges will come but you are tenacious to say here i am until i achieve i will not give up i'm telling you i'm looking at an achiever right there you will achieve in jesus name tenacity despite feebleness as strategy against famine strategy against famine the famine will come upon them if they didn't do what they were doing if they didn't gather at the right time get food at the right time famine will come and because of that they don't have strategy and it is that strategy that keeps them then there are millions now because they keep on working keep on working and we're going to grow i said we're going to grow we're coming to a tell me a now activity or foresight we're coming to um proverbs chapter 6 and i'm reading from verse 6 it says go to the ants thou sluggard consider her ways and be wise which having no guide no overseer and no ruler provideth a meat in the summer what, what does this mean having no guide having no ruler having no overseer that is there's no somebody that is carrying his stick and said if you don't do it now i'm going to do this you look at our students you look at our children they go to school and, and you have to motivate them you have to drive them you have to encourage them you have to cajole them you have to do a lot of things before they even read their books it says for the ants there's no motivator like that and there's nobody that is trying to threaten them there's no discipline that, that is somebody that will say if you don't do this i'm going to remove your name 
from the register. If you don't do this, you are not going to be a worker anymore. No threats, nothing. But even then, the internal drive, the internal instinct is there. And we have the Holy Ghost within us. We have the Word of God within us. And we have Jesus Christ, our Lord and Master. And He lives inside us. I think the Holy Ghost inside us will be more powerful than the instinct in the insect, in the ant. And from today, we're going to listen to that Holy Ghost. And we don't need to, for someone to drive us and push us and pull us and discipline us and, you know, sit down and get up and all that before we do anything. He says, learn that these uh, little, little ants, little insects and creatures, they don't have to be driven like that. And they do their work. I will do my work. Somebody there, you will do your work in Jesus' name. And then it goes on to say, provide some food in the summer. And then it says it gathered her food also in the harvest. Uh, what the Lord is telling us here, uh, what we're learning from them. Look at uh, Ecclesiastes, I'm reading from chapter 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 10. It says, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. It's in land that from the ants, they give, they don't have too much strength, but they put everything they've got into it. They don't have too much power, but all the power they've got, they put into their work. And it says, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. It says, this is the only day of opportunity. The only day of service and the only day of sacrifice and the only day of work. Therefore, everything you've got to do, think about your spiritual assignment. And think of the work you have to do. And think of your professional assignment you. Think of how you need to raise something for your family and for children. It says, do it with concentration and do it with all the energy you have got. That's why it says, go to the ants and learn from them. That's what they do. They put all energy and all strength and all power into the things they do. And we are going to do that from today. I said we're going to do that from today in Nehemiah chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 4, here we're looking at verse 6. These are people that have learned their lessons. And we are learning our lessons today. I will work. I said I will work. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 6. So, so built we the world. And all the world was joined together unto the half thereof. Look at this. For the people had a mind to work. For the people had a mind to work. He said, it's not because of my being the overseer. The people had a mind to work. It's not because I drove them. I threatened them. He said, because the people have a mind to work. It's not because I gave them incentive. It's not because of any award or reward I gave them. The people have a mind to work. You see, the people who serve the Lord and they serve the Lord faithfully, it's not because of motivation or promotion or whatever it is. It's because we have a mind to work. And thank God you are there today. I say thank God you are there today. The reason you are here today is because it's in your mind. I will be there and you are here. God will reward you. And God will bless all your efforts in Jesus' name. They urge a mind to work. What do we have the mind to work? A reward is coming on the final day. And we will not miss our reward. In Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. I'm reading here from verse 12. Reward is coming. And on that final day, there will be a crown on your head. There will be stars in your crown. That's the reason we're doing all that we're doing. Because we're sure that our God who has promised is a faithful God. It says in Revelation chapter 22 verse 12. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me. To give every man. How many people? To give every man. I said how many people will he give? Oh, to give them reward according to that as their work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And it says the first and the last. Blessed are they. I'm one of them. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Are you there? You will be blessed. It says for they may that they may have right to enter. Each, to enter into to enter into the into uh, to enter. 
that may have right to, to the tree of life and may enter in through the gate to the city. Now, as we look at these ants, number one, they are antidote against laziness. Antidote against laziness. And that is anytime you feel lazy, you feel idle, you feel I'm tired today, you feel I cannot go on, remember the ants. Remember the ants because they are antidotes against laziness. You consider these who are more feeble than you are. They are weaker than you are. And yet they are active and productive every time. Number two, activity in labor. Activity in labor. And why do we say activity in labor? There's activity in play. There's activity in uh, roaming around. There's activity in loitering. But you gather your energy together. You know, if you're going to loaf around, it takes some energy for you to just walk here and walk there and go here and go there and say, what are you doing here? I just came, you know, I'm just uh, loafing around. Loafing takes activity. It takes some energy. Convert all that to labor. Convert all that to productivity. And say, instead of going there, just loafing, I'm going there, I'm going to witness. I'm going there, I'm going to evangelize. I'm going there, I'm going to teach. I'm going there, I'm going to train. I'm going there, I'm going to do something. That's what it means. We're talking about activity in labor. You see all those uh, little, little creatures? There are millions of them. And they build ant hills. And some, those who have studied about the ants, they, they build in stories. And you'll be surprised. Are these the little creatures that built all this uh, ant hill? Yes. And no one, no ant expects another one to do its work for him. Because they are all active. They, I do mine, you do yours, we do ours. And that is how they build all those ant hills. Number one, antidote against, tell me. Laziness. Number two, tell me. Activity in labor. Number three, as you look at the ants, you see absence of lukewarmness. Absence of lukewarmness. You know, the Lord does not have to rebuke any of the any of the ants. I'm going to spew you out of my mouth because you are lukewarm. No, there's no lukewarm ant. Because everyone, they're active every time. Have you ever seen an ant that is just somewhere, that you know, just there and just idle and just, you never find anything like that. Anytime you see the ants, they're either going or coming. They're either carrying something or supporting something all the time. You see them active. And the Lord said, go to the ants and go and learn. And and when you learn, you'll consider their ways and you will be wise. The absence of laziness. And then number four is the advantage of their littleness. Advantage of littleness. They can get where big creatures cannot get to. They can crawl in somewhere where other people cannot get to. They make use of the littleness as advantage. Other people will make use of their littleness as a disadvantage, as an excuse. Because I am little, because I am small, I cannot. But he said, because I am little, I can get to where those big creatures cannot get to. Because I am small, I can get to all those places. You think about that too. There are places you can get to the people who are greater than you cannot get to. There are places you can get to the people who are stronger than you cannot get to. Look at how can I make use of this, my littleness? This, my feebleness. This, my lack of a degree. Or this, my lack of this and that. I'm not, maybe you're a woman, you're not a man that is strong like something that can carry the pole of a city. But you're just a woman. What can I do as a woman that a man cannot do? You turn your littleness, you turn it to advantage. Advantage of littleness. And then addiction without leadership. Addiction without leadership. Those ants, they are addicted to activity. They are addicted to work. And yet, there's no leadership. You know, there are people that are always giving us excuses. And they say, well, eh, we don't have a leader here. You are the leader there. 
Which other leader are you looking for? We don't have a director. You are there. You are the director there. We don't have a, somebody to come and give us instruction. You are the instructor there. You know what to do. And the Lord has given you understanding and intelligence. And he says, this is what you do. You get addicted to that work without leadership. And then we get there, we say, how was this done? How was this done? They said, is that young brother there? Is that young sister there? Is that our mother in the Lord there? Is that our daddy in the Lord there? All alone by yourself? Who was your leader? And who directed you? The Holy Ghost directed us. You are right. The Holy Ghost is a great leader. And Jesus is a great captain. And even though there is a human leadership that is missing there, Christ will direct you. You will do exploits for the Lord in Jesus' name. A activity with foresight. I'm looking at N. What is N? Networking for the future. We're coming back now again to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. We're looking at their networking. And their networking for the future. Proverbs chapter 6. And we're reading again from verse 6. It says, go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provides her meat in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. If you have ever watched the ants, uh, you know, to any extent, you'll see that generally ants do not work in isolation. They don't have the ego, I can't, because they know they cannot. That is, if they are separated, they are insignificant. A single ant by itself is insignificant. The power, the wisdom of their work is in their working together, networking together. And you know something about the ants? They never hinder one another. Never. Hindrance is not in their dictionary. They don't hinder the help. They don't contradict their assist. They don't oppose. They support each other. And that's what the Lord is saying. Go to the ants and learn that there's a limit to what you can do by yourself alone. But it is when we unite together. It is when we fellowship together. You respect me. I respect you. I love you. You love me. I know you are significant. I know that without you, I cannot succeed. You know that without me, you cannot succeed. You know that it takes the left hand to wash the right hand and the right hand to wash the left hand before both will be clean. But if you isolate any hand and then to do everything by itself. No, it's not possible at all. That's why it says, the eye cannot say to the ear, I have no need of you. The ear cannot say to the mouth, I have no need of you. The head cannot say to the feet, I have no need of you because God has placed everyone where it is and you are there. I am there. You know, some people say, after all, they can do it without me. No, we cannot do it without you. After all, I can do it without them. No, you cannot do it without them. It is as we unite together there's strength and unity. There's power in unity. There's productivity in unity. That's why you find those hands networking together for the future. It says in that verse 8 that they provide their meat in the summer, in this in the summer, and then they gather their food for the harvest. We're coming back to this uh, chapter 30, Proverbs chapter 30. And I'm reading from verse 24. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 24. It says, There are before things which are little upon the earth, but the exceeding wise. The ants are a people, they are creatures, not strong, yet they, plural, they prepare their meat in the summer. And in verse 26, the conies are but a feeble folk, yet make they their houses in the rocks. They're feeble, and then you find that they make their houses in the rocks. And that's telling us something. It is as we do it together. Alone, you're insufficient. Alone, you're insignificant. But together, those hands build storehouses. They build stories of hand heels to live in. And then they also build nests for their young ones and to protect the, for the rainy season and for the winter time. Their littleness and feebleness could have hindered progress, could have stopped productivity, 
could have stopped their provision and could have prevented them from being preserved. When you find an ant alone, it's very easy to kill a single ant. But when you find them together and they support each other, it's very, very difficult for you to handle them. Networking overcomes all their obstacles. They never hinder but they always help one another. And as you see those signs, what do you see about the ants? I told you, number one, anticipate the future. Ants anticipate. Ants anticipate. You anticipate the future. That's what, what it says. It says learn from them. Not just work. You are working with the future in mind. You are working with what's going to happen tomorrow. What's going to happen next year? Everything you are doing today is so that you'll provide for the future. Number one, anticipate the future. Number two, assist your fellows. That's networking. Assist your fellows. It's not like, you know, what are you doing there? I can do the work. Because you're being there, let's see what I can do. No, it increases what you can do. Because um, if, if you know that a word, team. You spell team as T, tell me the next letter, E, the next letter, A, and then M. Team, T-E-A-M. Together, everybody achieves more. T, together. E, everybody. A, achieves. M, more. You see, if you're all alone by yourself, it's like, you know, you will not reach your capacity, your level, your optimum, the maximum you can do as a team together. And, you know, the brothers are not saying, sisters, what are you doing there? This is not an area for women. Every area is for every one of us, the men and the women. The boys and the girls, the adults and the young people, the English and the language people, the campus and this, everyone, everyone. There's no sectionalism to the point of, hey, this is my area. We can help in your area. This is my responsibility. We can make you to be more productive because together, everybody achieves more. It is as we network together. Look at those hands again. Imagine them. If you've seen those hands before, as this one is trying to carry a small, it's a small insect. It's carrying something big. And then this one will come, this one, before you know what, we don't know where they're coming from. They're all surrounding that thing and they're, and they're doing it and doing it and doing it. It says, go to the ants and learn. Go to the ants, that's slogan, and consider her ways and be wise and anticipate the future assist your fellows acknowledge your feebleness acknowledge your feebleness don't say i am all in all i can do all i don't need your help i don't need your contribution i don't need your assistance of course you need acknowledge your feebleness acknowledge your insufficiency and understand without the rest of us you cannot be everything you ought to be. And without you, we cannot be everything we ought to be. Then attend to duty without fault finding. Don't spend your strength criticizing other people. Ants don't do that. They don't attend. They attend to their work without fault finding. They allow the small one to carry the small bead you can carry. And the big one to carry the big part you can carry. No fault finding. No criticism. And no fighting against anything. You will attend to your duty without fault finding abstain from frivolities abstain from frivolities you know what those hands they know that my strength is small because my strength is small i only have enough strength to do the work i am appointed to do because if you have a, let's say you have a little amount of money you cannot buy frivol frivolous things. Things that, you know, after your bottle sins, there are essential things you cannot buy. You spend that little thing you have, that little strength you have, and that little power you have on the reality, on the things that you really need to spend. That's why you find those ads. They do not spend their little strength, the little strength they have, 
on frivolities. And you now, you think of things that are eternal and things that are essential so that you are spending your effort, you are making everything you are doing it to be like uh, it's going to profit you for eternity. You'll be wise in Jesus' name. Uh, let's look at this networking. We're looking at Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. I'm reading here from verse 3. Mark chapter 2 verse 3. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of form. You see that? The man was sick. The man was paralyzed. And paralyzed people like that, they're heavy to carry. And only one person could not do that. And these people have gone to the ants. They have gone to learn. And they say, I can be at that corner. You can be at that corner. Hold the blanket at that corner. And hold the bed on that other corner. And the four of them networking together. They brought this person to Christ. Look up here for a moment. Sometimes you are evangelizing. And you've gone to somebody and when you went to the person all you did was awareness when you spoke to the person the person became aware okay there's something they call salvation okay there's somebody they call jesus okay there's something you call heaven you only created awareness and then another person comes talking to the same person but you know if you're not learning from the answer you'll say what are you doing that's my convert he's not converted yet that's the person I got to go to another person. Why are you coming to the same person? I've been talking to him before. You created awareness. He is bringing in conviction. Conviction. You see, the, when you first of all talk to the person, awareness, the fellow realizes, okay, I'm not saved. Okay, I'm not born again. Okay, I need Jesus Christ. But he's not born again yet. Another person comes. And when that person comes, he now brings conviction. And the man is not converted yet. And the two of you, you say, well, that's my convert that's my con but not converted it another person now comes and then he says have you heard about christ before yes i have have you heard about salvation yes i've heard have you heard that without being born again you will not see the face of the lord yes i've heard what are you doing why don't you give your life to the lord now because you can die anytime and the fellow kneels down and then is born again that's conversion. But he is not the only one. The first person did part of the work, awareness. The next person did part of the work, conviction. And this person now is being part of the work, is doing a, what we call conversion. And then another person comes and he says, they gave me your card. They said you gave your life to the Lord. And I've come so that I can fellowship with you. And so you can continue with the Lord. And then the, the, the person cannot say, no, no. I'm waiting for the person that first spoke to me. No, we're all doing it together. And this last person will bring confirmation. Confirmation. Because now the fellow will be established. The fellow will be stable. And the fellow will say, now I know. No temptation, no trial can move me. Because I've decided I'm going to follow Jesus. Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. The four of them, the one that created awareness, the one that created conviction, the one that brought conversion, the one that brought uh, confirmation, all the four of them networking together. That, that's what we need to do. Don't push the other worker away. Don't push that sister away. Don't push anybody away. They want to come on. Let's do it together because together we will succeed. I said together we will succeed. And that's what the Lord is telling us. He says uh, we should network together for the future. And in this uh, networking, number one, anticipate the future. Number two, tell me out there. Assist your fellows. Number three, tell me. Acknowledge your feebleness. Number four, tell me. Attend to duty without fault finding. Number five, tell me. Abstain from frivolities. Number six, advance towards your future advance towards your future everything you're doing as you're carrying that load together as you're uniting together as you're fellowshipping together be making a step at a time a day at a time another mile another kilometer another effort you are making progress together a activity with uh, foresight and n is Networking for the future, now T, tenacity in spite or despite feebleness. Tenacity despite feebleness. You see, if we have little strength, the secret of succeeding 
when you don't have uh, too much talent and too much ability and too much uh, strength, the secret of success is to be tenacious, is to grip that thing is to hold that sin and never let go. You know, you're leading, out, you're leading house fellowship. You know that you're not very strong. You're not too much talented. But you know, you're always there. You're there before the people come. And while the people are there, you are there. And the verse of scripture, you know, you keep on repeating that. And then you elaborate on it and you explain it to them. If they ask you any question or if they say anything that will jolt you and disturb you, just stay there. Just stay there. Just stay there. Don't be intimidated. Don't be afraid. Don't let anybody run you away because just staying there. Tenacity. Just being there. Tenacity. Just holding on. Tenacity. You will win the day. I said you will win the day. And then anytime you start doing something good, something wonderful, and the wind begins to blow, and the rain begins to fall, and the challenges begin to happen, just stay there. There is something is staying there that is sticks to that thing, that stays with that thing, that makes us succeed. Because you see, it will build your backbone. And it will make you to say, this thing, I've gone this far. Look at all the money I've spent. Look at all the strength I've spent. Look at all the energy I put into it. The little that remains, I will not quit. I said I will not quit. I said I will not quit. You will not quit in Jesus' name. Tenacity despite feebleness. Tenacity despite feebleness. We're looking at Judges chapter 8. Judges chapter 8. And I'm reading here from verse 4. Judges chapter 8. Reading from verse 8. The army of Gideon was small. Small in comparison with the Midianites they were fighting against. And even though they were small, even though they were feeble, because they were there. They stuck to what they were doing. They were steady and stable and solid in what they were doing. They didn't quit. They won. You will not quit. You will win. We're looking at Judges chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 4. And it says, And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over he and the 300 men that were with him. Tell me what follows there. Faint. Tell me the next thing. Yet pursuing them. Faint. Yet pursuing them, faint, yet pursuing them. Are you going to the workers' meeting today? I don't know because of this little headache. You know, every time you know headache comes like this, I don't. I will not know what. I will not find myself. I, I find you. I find you. You you'll find yourself, and you will say headache. You can blow that head off. I'm going to that workers' meeting. I said, I'm going. You know, every time it begins to drizzle a little, it looks like it's going to rain today. What am I going to do? Anytime a rain falls on me, I tell you, when pneumonia catches me, the way I will be, you will pity me. No, that thing will change today. Pneumonia will not catch you. Tenacity is what you need. You know, if it is sunny, you know, when the sun is like that and I sweat, it is a terrible thing. It cannot come out in the sun. It cannot come out in the rain. It cannot come out in the afternoon. When it is dark like this and I don't see very well, I cannot come out. It cannot come out in the day. It cannot come out in the night. When are you going to come out? That's laziness. Get up and wake up. Whether it is sunny, come out. It is raining, go do your work. Or it is night, go do your work. And this work will prosper in your hands. You know, we, we, we might be tired. Who doesn't get tired? The army of uh, or the soldiers walking on the Gideon, they were faint, they were faint. But they said, one more effort, one more day, and one more striking. And then we're going to do it. That's how they overcame. Because of that tenacious attitude, because of that commitment, that is how they overcame. Number one, no excuse for failure. No excuse for failure. They said, I will not fail. I will not fail. Somebody there, you will not fail. There will be no excuse. You are tenacious. You are on that scene. I will say, this victory will, 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 will win this victory. 
this victory. We're going to have this victory. And then no exemption from faithfulness. No exemption from faithfulness. Nobody was exempted. Out of the 300, see, all the, the number of the soldiers under Gideon, there were 300. And we're told here, of these uh, 300, all of them, no exception. They said, we will be there. And they were there. You'll be there in Jesus' name. And that's what we learned from the ants. Those ants, they never exempt, uh, exempt themselves. They don't say, well, you are small. You can stay behind. You are ugly. You can stay behind. You are not well coordinated. You can stay behind. No, every one of them there's no exception for faithfulness you'll be faithful to the very end in Jesus name and then uh, there is no entanglement with fleeting fancies no entanglement with fleeting fancies the things that are passing away all those things do not interest them the only thing that interests them is the work they're supposed to do and that's the reason why if we are children of God and walk as God has raised us up there's no interest in flippant things, uh, frivolous things, or fleeting things, or fancies. Here we are. It is just the work the Lord has given us to do, and we're going to do it in Jesus' name. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, reading here from verse, uh, from verse 16. It says, uh, for Though uh, for which cause we faint not. It says uh, Gideon's army did not faint. I am not going to faint. Although there was fainting, yet they pursued, they continued. I'm going to continue. Tenacity is the is the word, is the word for achievement. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Outward man. What does that mean? It means our outward figure, outward physique. The physically, you see that did you say the man is say he looks weak. Why doesn't he go to rest? The man is a bench low. Why doesn't he go to rest? The man is like is walking slower than before. Why doesn't he go to rest? It says, do our outward man, our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is renewed day by day because of the energy of the spirit, the power of the Holy Ghost and the unction the anointing, it will come in your life and you will do what you ought to do in Jesus name outward man getting weak and yet strength from day to day, we're looking at uh, Nehemiah chapter 4 in Nehemiah chapter 4 I'm reading from verse 2, Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 2, uh, the observation of the people that looked at these people, feebleness or, or fainting and yet tenacious and doing the work that they ought to do like those hands in Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 2 and he spake before his brethren and the army of uh, Samaria and said what do these feeble Jews, what do these feeble Jews which they fought will they fortify themselves will they sacrifice, will they make an end in a day, will they revive the stones of uh, the stones out of the heaves and uh, of the rubbish which are burnt. What do these feeble Jews? They saw them as feeble. They saw them as weak. They saw them as small. Look at verse 10. In verse 10 it says, And the Judah said, The strength of the bearers of the body in is decayed. And there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. And then come now to verse uh, 14. In verse 14 it says, And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of uh, the people, Be not afraid of them. Remember the Lord which is great and terrible and fight for your brethren your sons and your daughters and your wives and your houses and it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us and God had brought their counsel to naught God will bring the counsel of the enemies to naught in your life this work will prosper in your hand 
this ministry will prosper in your hand that uh, we returned all of us to the world everyone unto his work they said we're feeble we return to the work they said we're not strong we return to the work they said what are these people Jews doing? And then we say, we don't mind all that. We return to the work. And see how they work. See how they work. I'm looking at verse, uh, verse 21. So, we labor in the work. You will labor in this work. And half of, half of them held the spears from the rising of the sun till the stars appeared. And so you see, they did the work. Why? Tenacity. Everybody say tenacity. How do you describe that? How do you think about tenacity? That is, you're holding on to something and you're keeping at it. And even though it appears there's weakness, even though it appears there's fainting, even though it appears there are challenges, you're still holding on. How do they do that? Doggedness with discipline. Doggedness with discipline. When somebody is dogged with discipline, that is, he has internal discipline. That is, he has uh, mind discipline. He has spiritual discipline. And is dogged about what he's doing. That's tenacity. It just goes on. It might be walking slowly, but it's going on. It might be moving slower, but it's going on. Doggedness with discipline. Number two, diligence without despair. Diligence without despair. Uh, there is no tiredness there's no i am weak there is no excuse there's no despair there's no regret he's diligent about what he's doing this is a difficult assignment you divide it into small small parts and then you take this small part diligently you get that done go to the next small part do that go to the next part until it is done you will finish the race i said you will finish the work Number one, doggedness with, tell me, discipline. Number two, diligence without despair. Number three, decision or determination. I decide I will continue with the brethren until we get this work done. That decision, you determine that nothing will change it. Number four, deafness to distractions. Deafness to distractions you are deaf to distraction something there's a voice over there saying hey are you still there you are deaf to that hey are you still going to hold on you are deaf to that whatever distraction may be coming and the rain is falling you are deaf to that i said you are deaf to that hey your clothes will get wet you are deaf. i didn't hear that i'm deaf to that Hey, once it begins to rain now, your Bible, rain will fall on your Bible. I have another one at home. You are deaf to that. Because, you know, if you're going to succeed to the very end, you need that deafness to destruction and dedication until death. Dedication until death. That's what we'll find about those ants. Those little, little ants, they go on, they go on until they drop down dead they keep on doing their work you will do this work to the end and nothing will take this great work of god from your hand in jesus name you will succeed we will succeed together because it says go to the ants consider her ways and be wise a activity or foresight and tell me networking for the future and then t Tenacity despite feebleness. S, strategy against famine. Strategy against famine. We're coming back to Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. And we're looking at the ants here. These ants, although they're small, yet they have strategy. And it is strategy against famine. They need to eat. That's why they developed that strategy. And they need to feed their young ones. That's why they hold on in that strategy. And they need to prepare for the winter. They need to prepare for a time they may not be able to walk anymore. That's why they have all the strategy. The strategy against 
against famine. We're coming to chapter 6 of Proverbs, verse 6. Go to the ants, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide of a seer or ruler, provides a meat in the summer and gathers a food in the harvest. You remember the story of Joseph. It's in Genesis chapter 41. Pharaoh had a dream. He saw this dream and then he couldn't understand. And he brought Joseph from the prison and then told Joseph the dream. And Joseph said, there will be seven years of plenty. There will be seven years of famine. And when that famine comes, nobody will remember the years of plenty. And uh, so, what are we going to do now? That's where strategy comes in. And Joseph said, gather all the food you can in the seven years of plenty. So you can prepare for the time of the famine. That's Joseph learning from these ants because they prepare their food before, uh, you know, before winter. And eventually they said, can we find a man like this in whose the spirit of God is? And they made him the overseer of the work. And when the famine eventually came, everybody was kept alive because of that strategy against famine. There's a famine of the watch of God. We're looking at Amos chapter 8. Amos chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 11. Amos chapter 8, verse 11. Behold, the days come, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Hearing the words of the Lord. If you look at all the places, not places of worship, there is a famine of the word. But thank God, as you are coming, and we are listening to the word of God, of the world but thank God as you are coming and we are listening to the word of God as you are coming and we are teaching and you are receiving this is strategy against farming the farming of the word of God will never be in your house will not be and as we now as we are preparing ourselves I was studying the Bible from cover to cover and we're learning at the workers meeting at the leaders meeting at the Sunday service at the Monday Bible study all that we're learning we're learning also for the future generation of our children as they come after they will not be people without uh, the word of the present strategy for the days of farming the ants prepare adequately before winter or before the rainy season, our own year of winter is fast approaching. Are you making all necessary preparation for the future? I'm talking of future heaven. I'm talking of the time of the rapture. Are you ready at this time? The proper season for the ants to gather food for storage is limited to the present time. The present life is the season which you can make provision for the next world. If we're going to get saved, so we can it's the time to make preparation. If we're going to get sanctified, this is the time to get sanctified. If we're going to do so winning, evangelize, so that you'll not go empty-handed before the Lord when he comes, this is the time we we'll walk now because there's a strategy in the case of the future and of the family. Are you as wise as the ants? Their activities are not undertaken occasionally. But you see, day by day, time after time, hour after hour, those ants, they go on and on. The same thing, we're going, not going to relegate the work God has given us to do to occasional, vacational holiday times. But every time we concentrate on the work, the great work of harvest, harvesting souls into the kingdom, the great work of preparing saints for heaven must not be done uh, by, you know, just laying aside some little free time. But every day, we always we get it done and we must be busy every time. As uh, Jesus said to Mary, don't you know, what were you seeking after me? Don't you know I must be by my father's uh, business? And then in John chapter 9, he tells us in verse 4, John chapter 9, he has the work at this time. Because the time is coming when no man can work. And while it is day, while you have the day of opportunity, while you can move on and be active and productive, this is the time. Make sure the work is done. 
We have learned a lot from the ants today. Come back to Proverbs uh, chapter 13 now. Proverbs chapter 13. And I'm reading here from verse 24, verse, from verse 25. Uh, 24 and 25. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 24. It says, There are four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise, extremely wise, extremely wise. It says, The ants are a people, not strong, they're feeble, they're small, they're weak, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. Yet they prepare their meat in the summer. Let's summarize what we have learned today. Preparation for the future. Preparation for the future. Prepare for eternity. Christ is coming. Because he says, behold, I come quickly. Because he's coming, blessed are those that watch. That they will not be naked. They will not be found naked on that day. When he comes, prepare. Are you saved? That's part of preparation. Are you sanctified? That's part of preparation. Do you have the holiness without which no man shall see the Lord? That's part of preparation. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. That's part of the preparation. Preparation for the future. Preparation for eternity. Number two, perseverance with fortitude. Perseverance with fortitude. The world has no place for the coward. They'll run over you. They will walk over you. They will trample upon you. They will push you aside. They say you are blocking the road. Because while you're still standing there, should I move this way? Should I move that way? Should I move forward? Should I move backward? The people who have goals and the people who are behind you, they just push you aside. They walk over you. That's why if you're going to make it in this busy world, there's perseverance with fortitude. Inside you, there's that fortitude. Inside you, there's that courage. Inside you, there's that conviction. And you will, you say, I'm not part of the people that fall by the wayside. I'll be part of the people that move on to the final end. And you will in Jesus' name. Number one, tell me. Preparation for the future. Number two, tell me. Perseverance with fortitude. I'm just asking you that because maybe you've written so much and you're tired of writing. My hands are tired. I cannot write anymore. Ah uh ah. -uh. Feeble tenacity. I'll keep on writing. I said I'll keep on writing. I will move on till the very end. I will not fall by the wayside. Tell me out loud. Give yourself a good amen. Number three is progress without fainting. Progress without fainting. Look up here. Look at me. I will progress. I said I will make progress. Progress without fainting. Every life has a summer. Every life has a winter. That's the reason why I'm strong today. I will walk. I have the opportunity today. I will walk. I have the voice today. I will evangelize. I have the ministry today. I will do soul winning. The opportunity I have today, I'll make use of that. Keep on making progress without thinking. Number four, perception with foresight. Perception with foresight. You consider you have foresight. You see, that is the thing to do. And this is the time to do it. And then these are the other workers, other leaders, other members of the church that surround me. And we're going to do it together. Number five, preparedness of the faithful. The preparedness of the faithful. That means you are ready, always ready. Always ready. And when the trumpet shall sound, any of these days the trumpet shall sound and thank God you will be ready. Because every day you don't leave any stone unturned. You don't leave anything undone. You say you're looking at the future and you're looking at when the Lord will come and you say I will be ready. If nobody gets ready, my brother there I see you, you'll be ready. My sister there I saw you, you'll be ready. We'll be ready in Jesus' name. Learn from the ants. Activity. Networking ethnicity, strategy. Combine them together, you'll be wiser than the ants. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, help me today. You've taught me something today. I've got something today. I've learned from the hands today. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. This will not be in vain. This will not be in vain. 
I'm going to put all this to practice and something good will come out of this. Open your mouth and pray.